I'm fired up. It's made a great decision. Great teammates, coaches, and other people who want to be Super Bowl champions. And we are. We're going to do it this year. And we're going places because we want to go places. Touchdown, the Detroit Lions! Before long, where are they going to be the last one standing? What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are back to take a look at some of the All-22 from this Lions-Panthers game. And today, we're diving into the offensive side of the ball for the Lions, where in the past game, I thought they were actually pretty good. The Lions had a pretty good amount of explosive, big plays, chunk plays in this game. The biggest issue in the passing game seemed to be the deflected passes at the line of scrimmage and also just a couple little things that were left out there. Now, the run game was not great. That still hasn't been great for the Lions for a little while now, like weeks. Now, it has been an issue for the Lions. They haven't found a consistent and run game and in today's video I want to show a few different examples of maybe where runs went wrong and how it's not necessarily just like one guy that was that's the issue in the run game there's a lot of different things that popped up in this one however I think next week in Chicago we're in a spot where I think that could definitely get back on track for a while there we didn't have our starting our starting our normal right guard in Evan Brown we didn't have him and I thought that was a big part of the issue Last week, we played a good defensive front. I thought we lost that battle, arguably up front, trying to run the ball. And then this week, I thought it was a lot of different things that popped up when we tried to run the football. Plus, we were in a hole, so it kind of took us out of it a little bit. So with that, we're going to look at some good, some bad, all of those things. Let's dive into it. Our last video was about the Lions' defense, so feel free to check that out. It's a little bit shorter. We looked at some of the big plays we gave up, some of the adjustments and those kind of things. But today, it's about the offense. Now, this first play is going to be a little blurry. I don't know why it does this. The first play is always blurry. But you guys all remember this play, so it's fine. It's fine that is blurry all right one thing for sure Carolina played a good amount of cover three in this game and that's something I give you know credit Ben Johnson those guys they always seem to be on top of what a team's tendencies are and how they're going to attack them and guys just seem to be prepared for what a team does in certain spots here you have a third down and 10 and they're going to go into cover three interesting call Cover three, it's a balanced coverage, so the Lions use the fast motion here with St. Brown. There's no movement. We know it's zone coverage at this point, and uh, not a lot of craziness to this one, but I think it's just really cool. Um, biggest thing here is, okay, you're going to have your flat underneath defender. He's going to take St. Brown, who is the fast motion player, out of the play. So now you isolate this outside corner and the deep middle safety as this safety is actually going to roll down into the box here. He may be blitzing on this play. Yeah, the other safety is actually blitzing, so we picked that up. Regardless, though, biggest thing here, and I think Goff actually does this, or he could just be reading it lions have a deep out route and then they have the deep corner route which is what they're going to throw uh to dj chark right here on the inside the biggest thing is now because of the numbers you have your deep middle safety who's on inside leverage versus a corner route that's what you're looking for and then you have a deep out route basically to the sticks so this outside corner if the outside corner jumps down because he's that deep third of the field if he jumps down on this out route now you can immediately just throw it up there to dj shark because you know that he's going to have that outside leverage and now he's one-on-one -on -one with the safety if he continues to get depth you could try to throw that out route and then you're hoping that this uh outside zone flat defender in a cover three is going to stick and sit down there with St. Brown then he can go right behind him in this case I think golf looks there he's looking I know it's hard to tell from this one but he's looking uh, at this deep out route and as the cornerback sits as soon as he sits uh, Jared Goff, without really even looking, just goes right deep right there. That cornerback sits on it, so immediately he turns his head and just fires it. So you can see the cornerback opens up to the out route. Now, all of a sudden, you have that leverage. Uh, maybe not the best ball take. He hit as he threw it, but just gave him a chance. I mean, it was just simple as that. The safety, the biggest issue there because of how he's lined up, he's just trying to find where the ball is at. That's going to be the biggest issue. And again, uh, the fast motion kind of outnumbers them a little bit here. But you're going to see a couple of blown blocks on the inside. Uh, Frank Ragnow, uh, Evan Brown. So there's pressure. Uh, we picked up the blitz, I believe, but just gave it up, put it up there, gave him a chance, and there was your 39-yard shot. This was interesting. The Lions mixed this in there. They went to the pistol a couple of times. Jamal Williams, you can see the two back left, and then they have the running back on this play, which is going to be St. Brown. I'm going to show you from the other angle. Lions are going to get a little creative here. They're going to be pulling on this play. They're going to pull Jonah Jackson outside numbers here, and then they're going to have Jamal Williams leading the way. We did this, I think, last week, and Jamal missed the block. That's exactly what happens again Jamal doesn't really get a piece he kind of just throws himself at the defender which I get it right 97 gross Matos he kind of throws himself at him okay but he doesn't really get contact here he like completely whiffs 
and 97 doesn't move. So now all of a sudden, Jonah Jackson, who's trying to pull outside, now he's got to deal with that guy that's first there. So it kind of slows up the pull, 97 gets through, and now all of a sudden you have a zero yard run on the play for St. Brown. Now we come back with this good throw because we did score on our opening possession, and uh, this one was pretty cool. I could probably just show it from the other angle um, because it just looks cool from the other angle. They drop into zone coverage on this play, and the biggest thing, as we know, we like to stack up our guys. You can see by how they release, it looks like zone coverage. You can see the open up linebacker, the cornerback out here from St. Brown. So you have zone coverage on this play. So you, this, this linebacker, which I thought Goff in this game, Game, did a really good job of reading their linebackers I thought that's what he did really well some big plays came off of reading the linebackers I thought he read the field really well in this game actually one of the best I've seen this season from doing all these all 22s this is one of the best I saw this year in this case he's going to move this linebacker with a little bit of a fake he's going to stare it down he knows St. Brown in this zone coverage because obviously he's outside he's going to break back inside so he needs to get this linebacker out of the way so he's going to stare that down to the left because the linebacker is watching his eyes right here give him that little nudge linebacker moves over golf sees him breaking inside so as soon as he does that he leaves him he just leads him he just leads him and he hits him for 13 yards that play was really nice really well done moving the linebacker i'll show you the other angle because it looks i think it looks cooler from this angle let's take a look here same thing number 49 on this play watch him here you see him, he's just moving this linebacker, holding him, holding him, boom. And again, this could be the option route, but obviously the cornerback's sitting on the outside here in this zone coverage. So now you just isolate this linebacker and say, we got to get him out of that zone because if he's following this receiver across, there's nowhere to throw that football. So we got to give him that little nudge, stare it down a little longer. Linebacker starts to move, and as soon as St. Brown breaks, now it's just leading him on that play, and that's exactly what he does. You come back and score a touchdown. Now what's great about this is that the previous play only went for one yard, but the Lions did the same thing. And this is something that you love too, is that the Lions, they come back with the same things, but they give you the same look. So the very last play for the touchdown, the Lions only got one yard, but this is what they did. We'll take a look. They're going to motion over, short motion here for Jamal Williams. You're going to move number seven. It actually, I think it was smart because it kind of created a lane here. It just did not work. But they give you that look, they go for a yard. Then they come back the next play and give you the same look defensively or offensively, which I think is cool. Same look, and this time it's Shane Zilstra, which you're going to see them bite on the play fake big time. You give them the same look, that bite big time, and you're going to hit this corner out here to Shane Zilstra on the play action. So there you go. There's the play fake. You see the linebackers bite down, but the biggest thing is who Shane Zilstra's on here. You see 49 crash a little bit, and and then it's this safety that starts to dive inside. And now all of a sudden, he's going to have to try to recover and get out here to Shane. Uh, golf design rollout. He's just moving that direction, make the throw a little bit easier, I guess. And then, uh, obviously, because the safety bites down, you gave him the same look. Now you just got to give him a chance and he put it on him. So, again... Cool stuff. I like how they, they give you the exact same look, and it clearly worked. Let's talk about another short run. This was a three-yard run, and uh, this one was a, was a zone look from the Lions, and this one looks like it was maybe more on Taylor Decker. Taylor Decker sort of lost his block this time. You see, you look at it, you're like, oh, Lions actually may have numbers on this play to think that this would work. You know, they motion over St. Brown. You're looking at the numbers of the defense. They're like, okay, we can we can kind of box this. We can kind of block this up, one, two, three, four. They got the outside corner, but he's kind of more in a slot than being in the box, if anything. So you got the numbers to this side with having, one two three four five blockers and a back you're liking your chances there with this zone play but you see taylor decker here he's going to lose his block right there and then of course on that inside zone where he's trying to get to now he's forced to bounce out of it say brown then is kind of blown by, back because you're not expecting him to have to go you know and hold that block up but that limits it to a three-yard game good thing is though our passing game was there and it was successful in this game which helped us a ton cover three being prepared for that so again you see him line up single high safety you're not going to rotate out so one three what are they doing they go cover three on this play and i thought the lions had a great answer for it let's take a look here so golf's reading the linebackers in this game i thought he did really well moving linebackers finding holes in in zone which we know we really do well with and again good pocket protection trust in your pocket helps that a ton well here number seven you circle him on this play golf's gonna stare this down he just needs this underneath hook zone defender he basically just needs to hold this curl defender out of the play because what they're going to do is we know weaknesses cover three, it can be the seams. And in this case, they're not carrying anything up the field, so that's what the weakness is. You're outside third here, you're going to run, he's just going to sit down, uh, just run a little quick route here, and then you're going to get the seam, but you're actually going to break it down. You're not just going to run through the seam. We've, we've seen guys open up to the seam, but they usually run through. In this case, the Lions are going to break it down. They're going to sit him down in the seam. So the Lions spread out the defense here, and watch how this plays out. So here, outside corner is going to communicate with Jeremy Chin. Hey, go take that, because that's his zone. He's got the outside, uh, outside flat zone. So He's going to take off out there for this uh, receiver that's just sitting down, um, 
Garrett Griffin on this play. Then you run up the seam. So now you have an outside corner that's on the outside versus a slot receiver in James Mitchell, where obviously he has to leverage on this play, plus he's playing off coverage on top of it. So instead of running through the seam, making this contested, he's going to sit down, and then you hold this, you watch seven. As soon as seven sits on Brock right here, you know that there's no one else in that area, and golf immediately can throw that pass. Plus, after the catch, look how fast James Mitchell gets upfield. This is one of my favorite things about him coming out. Rack. He's a big rack guy for a tight end, okay? It looks kind of weird, but he does it. It's like Tom Cruise running a little bit, right? It looks weird, but it's successful. That's what it is. Look look at this. It looks weird. He runs like this, but it works. And he got to feel very quickly, picked up extra yards. He made that 22 yards on the play. I'm going to show you the other angle of this, though, because, again, I thought this one just kind of looked cool because you can just see them kind of knowing how to attack the coverage that they're going to get looks for. And you can see Goff is just holding this linebacker right here. And as soon as that linebacker sits on it, now he can come off it. Timing's on point, and boom, right there you hit him. Also, on the inside, we had a, we had some passes deflected down. Sometimes it's getting blown back off the line, right? If your offensive lineman is blown back off the line, now they can get their hands up because there's not a lot of window for passing lane because there's not a lot of distance. So the lines adjusted. They started you know moving offensive linemen differently to try to try to combat that a little bit. Um, one thing I loved about Frank is the one time the ball got batted down on his guy, he threw him on the ground on the same play. Okay, so that was pretty cool. But that time, not batted down. Doing it, let's show another short run here. This is a two-pole offensive lineman here. They're going to pull Decker. They're going to pull Jonah on this play. Limited to three yards. A um, couple things. I think, you know, there's some areas where you're like, oh, maybe he kind of missed a block there, like upfield. And you can see what Swift is looking at. But instead of necessarily maybe going upfield into it, I understand. He felt daylight. He cut back. And obviously, they got off the block. And they only picked up three yards. So, you're going to see St. Brown on this backside. He's going to cut block, right? Just trying not to let the guy get through and blow up this play because you're pulling too often. Lyman. He just gets through right here, and you can see, right, okay, he can keep going upfield, keep going upfield, and then maybe Sewell can pick up this block and try to seal him off. Sewell kind of loses that um, initially trying to get up there to the linebacker, which is difficult to do. Swift feels daylight to his left to bounce it left, which I understand from his point of view, right, because, again, look, Sewell, he's trying to come down and kind of pin down this block here. He lost him right there. So if this was sealed up, yeah, I'm sure he would take off through there. But he saw that. He's like, okay, I don't love it. You also feel daylight back here. But again, say Brown's not trying to hold this block. He's just cut blocking to make sure that you can get out of the backfield, I would assume, right? That's that's kind of his thing there. So when he cuts back, now all of a sudden you run right back into that guy that, credit to him, got right back into the play, number 94. Didn't waste any time getting back into this one, not like laying on the ground or something. Really brought down to the ground either, so that wasn't ideal. But yeah, limited 2-3 our game. Just another reason, just another way um, that that took place. Well, this play won't spend a lot of time because I know we've been talking a lot here, but this is one of the this is a nice throw. I, I really, this was maybe my favorite throw, um, just accuracy wise. I thought there was a lot of good accurate throw. Hey, maybe you should always wear the gloves. But this was maybe my favorite throw accuracy wise. You can see the kind of man up in the back end, and all you're doing is you're going to have this like speed dig route here from St. Brown running across the field. Goff feels the pressure. He feels he feels it. So he starts to roll right, and he kind of rolls into this passing lane. Gives you a little sidearm angle, sort of there. Not completely, but a little bit. But obviously, this was a fantastic catch with the safety that's being asked to crash down here. Here because of course if he doesn't look at the space so the safety is going to try to crash down and uh, cut this thing off but uh just in time fantastic catch by st brown give him all the credit but at the same time i thought the, the throw looked pretty sweet from the backside so i'm going to show you what it looks like here because it looks kind of cool the way it came out let's take a look there's the play fake swift okay didn't really pick him up completely so that's where he feels the pressure but you can see him moving off balance a little bit little kind of sidearm right by the defender i mean that was a pretty money throw that's about as money as you can get that accuracy wise show too many more of these like un bad runs but i just want to give you a sense of like where they're coming from and how you know different plays it's different things in this case it's probably more frank rag now than anything who kind of loses this block on his own play now obviously you can see by the d-line alignment you know in a one tech here it's gonna be tough he's gonna have to try to get over and kind of cut this thing off which he does i guess but he loses this block on this play you can see the penetration gets up field way too quickly there on jackson and that limits it to a negative one yard run on that one even things like this right you motion out brock right you're asking uh, james mitchell to kind of crash it down towards the line their edge rushers were super aggressive whoever they would put on the edge this time it's uh, 49 they were very aggressive getting upfield. obviously we saw one of the sacks take place when evan brown was unable to pull around in time so he had to adjust and he didn't it set up a big play we'll take a look at that but this time he's unable to really seal the edge he just gets through gets right by james mitchell on this one and now it's a negative four yard run to split zone so they were very aggressive upfield fumble on this drive which was a killer because unfortunately we were moving the ball well and this is one of the i love it like this stuff is just awesome i love watching this because i'm like that is creative as heck to think that this would make sense this is creative okay 
you're going to get your end around here. You're watching this live. I don't see all this going on. We don't see all this happening and what the lines are actually doing to set this up. You think it's just an end around. Well, look, they're going to motion Shane Zilstra left then right. Okay, so obviously Jeremy Shin, who's matched up on him. He's probably in man. He's matched up on him. Uh, he's going to move with the motion. Well, on top of that, the fast motion here, he doesn't go all the way back through. It's a fast motion. So he comes in and then he kicks back out to lead block. But why does Shin not follow? Well, the Lions do a run fake with a pulling offensive lineman. What? So now Jeremy Chin, who's all of a sudden got his attention in the box, now you run fake, pulling off its lineman. He's like, oh, the run's there. So he sights, so he sits, he pauses. Meanwhile, Shane Zilster is returning. He's going back. He's going to kick out to lead block. So now all of a sudden, all you did was you just took a defender out of the play. Instead of having to just block, you just took Jeremy Chin out of the play and basically created an extra blocker with Shane Zilster because of the fakes there. That is awesome. Then uh Khalif Raymond gets the end around. Now look how far Chin has to travel. So you create room. Now Khalif has to make him miss. St. Brown loses his block here uh, late. But, man, it's a heck of a cut by Khalif to pick up that first down. But, yeah, man, I thought that was just sweet play design. And, obviously, we came back. We fumbled. See, we had too many passes bad down at the line. I thought the Lions tried to find ways to kind of mitigate these. And, and they did as the game went on a little bit. But this time, you see it's uh, right here on Evan Brown's guy. He actually beats him inside a little bit here. So, he actually gets into a passing lane that probably shouldn't be there. It's a quick cover three look, quick hole. And it makes sense. It's, it's a fine read. But he kind of beats him inside. So, now he all of a sudden kind of gets in golf's passing lane there and it breaks it down it's hard to like look it off i mean you could try to look it off but then you're throwing off the timing and because of how the secondary is moving um because it is a cover three and because you're how you're setting up they got this multiple times you don't really want to necessarily take too long like this ball's got to get out right it's got to get out that way this linebacker's not in play if you look here and then you know the guys can get back in position so you're getting this ball out quick everybody's setting quick to get this ball out that's just unfortunate what was interesting is that later in the game the lions kind of got away from all right quick passing inside we're not going to do that what we're going to do because they're being very aggressive is we're actually going to get a quick pass uh, we're going to get a quick pass towards the outside and i'll show you that one how the lines adjusted to it get one here as well and uh, you can kind of see where this was where this was going to for st brown kind of running that whip route on the uh on the outside here off the motion and you can see sewell being beat off the line immediately like he does now he recovers so he doesn't get the sack which is awesome he sits down recovers but being kind of pushed back into the pocket that ball is deflected at the line of scrimmage and it ends that drive this was a bad drive for that i think there was two of those on this drive it kind of shut down the drive really um again and not having a run game is not helpful and being in third and ten they know you're passing so they're just screaming upfield and that push that you get off the line there and obviously golf wasn't staring that down he's moved a little left but it's just the timing coming into this game they seem to be very aware of they like look the lions will do some quick passing specifically on first down so get your hands up if you're not going to get there because you're probably not going to when they go to a you know a quick three-step drop and get it out from under center make sure you just get your hands up because they're going to throw a lot of things quick over the middle and they were prepared for that so i thought for them credit to them they were prepared for it where the lines are going to pull the offensive line you can see the counter that they set up here and then again you get the blown block on the inside a little bit there from frank right now he starts to kind of lose his block and maybe this is where dan campbell points to man finishing because he just was unable to get through uh as he as he lost his block right here you can see the sidestep he loses block on the inside and he just squeaked through and they're unable to really finish plus you know brock Wright didn't have the best block there so it really kind of cleaned up the lane and but this one's very unfortunate it's very unfortunate to watch this back i thought the ball placement was perfect trying to kind of almost throw him to the first down um the read was fine, I thought to me. I think it makes sense when you think about where he was looking to throw this football. It makes sense. But it was a third down and nine, which again, if you're running the ball better, hopefully you're not in this spot. And they're a yard short on this play. We're going to go cover three again. So, uh, I mean, talk about tendencies, right? We hit it early in the game. We hit a big play on cover three. And I think this thing, another cover three. We're playing the sticks here. We're trying to pick up this first down. So you see what they do. Again, you kind of switch off the release here. And you're going to, it's, it's this guy that I think you, you focus on, right? They're going to run the corner route right here on the inside from the slot and now that's a position where or or a deep out route that's one of those spots where it's like okay maybe we could look to throw that with the post over top but i think the biggest thing that you're looking for here is what you're trying to do is get that guy out of the play so for example this linebacker he has to continue to get depth because he's running up the seam because it's cover three he's going to continue to get depth to not let that sit right behind him so as this linebacker number seven continues to get depth with it sit back sit back now all of a sudden he's behind the first down line you sit down uh st brown who st brown is going to have inside leverage because again the guy that you're throwing at here has that outside underneath zone in a cover three defense and of course the deep post over top it kind of takes the corner 
and the safety, I guess, a little bit in a way. You could, if anything, the corner out potentially here, but I understand the idea because as you see that linebacker drop back, Goff sees that. Now he can come back underneath. You see where St. Brown's sitting down. Now he's very short of the first down, and Goff throws it to the inside. I thought this was good ball placement. It was also a great catch. Um, to throw him kind of back inside away from the defender and throw him towards the first down, almost giving us a chance to pick this up. Instead of sticking it on him where he has to get it, get upfield four yards, he leads him into the first down here. He's just a yard short on the play. So I understand the idea, but we were just a yard short on it. Like we saw last week, the Lions consistently work to isolate that outside underneath zone defender. So in this case, this potentially could be an option route because if anything, maybe the ball comes out a little bit earlier before the break and then potentially you have better catch and run opportunity. However, if it is that option route where you can break inside, outside, and the underneath zone defender sits outside, now he sits it down and breaks it down inside on this play. That is possible because, like I said, we did see the season against a team that played a lot of cover three. That may have actually been Jacksonville where the Lions try to isolate those options on the outside and put him in a position where he could break inside outside and we saw a big first down actually picked up by St. Brown when the defender broke inside and St. Brown broke outside so that obviously changes the timing when I say a little bit of an adjustment potentially so we're trying to hit these quick passes lines like the quick passing game especially when a team is playing off coverage with their corners pre-snap like they are you see how deep they are and they can roll into cover three I think they do out of this play yeah they do they roll into cover three here but they're playing off coverage with their cornerbacks so the Lions looking for this quick passing attack they were doing it towards the middle of the field they this time, they decide to break it towards the outside and hit an out route here to uh, Josh Reynolds for five yards. But I think that's a little bit of an adjustment. They're knocking things down inside. So the Lions say, okay, we're going to hit we're hit Josh Reynolds. And on top of that, we're going to have a really short set on the outside here at right tackle. Watch him work his way upfield, getting on top of this, not allowing him back into the pocket. Golf gets it out really quickly. But I, that felt like a little bit of an adjustment, you know, there for the Lions. Now attacking the outside for the quick passing game instead of trying to, you know, hit him in the inside because clearly they were not knocking down passes in the first half so we had to adapt and find a way to make sure that that's kind of stopped happening also the tight end kind of gets in his way so it slows down burns on top of that you have the tackle get up on him so I thought that was just a cool little adjustment the Lions made there for five yards on that play attacking how their cornerbacks are sitting I want to showcase this because I want to showcase good on the big play that comes up here this time it's Evan Brown who's unable to get around quick enough uh, for the block here he's going to pull to the left and he's unable to pick up this edge rusher they're getting upfield very fast there's no contact here with Garrett Griffin uh, or DeAndre Swift for that fact on this play so they're gonna pull Evan Brown he just doesn't get around quick enough on this play you see him he does not get around fast enough off the edge here to pick up this block but I showcased that because Evan Brown got a similar look and it picked up 56 yards because he adjusted to it and he got out very fast the very next time I'm gonna show that right now obviously that very that really hurt our drive that it put us in a second and 19 immediately but this is what I want to show you so it's a little bit different they have Garrett Griffin now um, offset here he's gonna block kind of set up here that way Jared Goff can get outside the pocket be his lead blocker basically on the play but you see Evan Brown on this play look how fast he gets out there pulling on this one I want to showcase that first give Evan Brown some love because I love the adjustment here by him look how fast he gets out there he gets out there quick cuts off Brian Burns on that play on a similar look from him at the same time the run fake is towards the right side with the offset Garrett Griffin who yes is going to block but the last time remember I believe it was a fake to the left so obviously maybe more aggressive upfield this time slanting a little bit more inside and it gives Evan Brown a little bit more time to get over there. And again, Brown just gets out there very fast. So he sets it up. Now Lions hit a big shot. Let's take a look at how that big shot happens. And it's just about this single high safety. You're rolling this right. So obviously the safety kind of moves with the flow. Also, St. Brown is going to cross the middle of the field here. And that's really what this is. Here's the crosser. And then you single up Jeremy Chin here one-on-one. -on -one. And all golf does is as soon as this safety shoots down on this crosser, because if he doesn't, the ball's going there. As soon as the safety bites down on this, immediately you're like all right over top that's the guy that I want now I thought the cornerback did a pretty good job of switching off here the cornerback didn't just stick with the crosser on this play when the safety broke down the cornerback passed it off but Kali Raymond speed he just ran by everybody on that one and against Jeremy Chin from the slot position uh he's on the inside so he's already got kind of the inside step based on how they're lined up as you're gonna see Khalif is inside the numbers here so he's playing that outside leverage kind of squeezing it inside and Khalif speed release just takes off on him and you're gonna see there yeah there's a switch but he's just too fast. And the Lions have done a great job this year with running detailed routes. I mean, you see St. Brown, he gets flat enough here where the cornerback is kind of in a position where he's not already on top of this route. Then Khalif breaks upfield, then back outside. So he gets to step on the corner. Then he gets to the outside corner as they switch that. The route detail has been beautiful too. And Goff didn't even really need to see it. As soon as the safety came down, he's like, that's where I'm throwing the football. And you just trust that your guy's going to run by him, I think, to a point. But that was... 
Heck of a throw. Awesome adjustment from Khalif. 56 yards to set us up to get a touchdown. And this is, we had a good amount of explosive plays. You see him look there. Safety comes down. He just is able to set himself up. Get himself out of the pocket. Clean pocket with a lead blocker so he can really step into that throw. And it's 56 yards later. And then a sweet touchdown pass. Let's take a look at this one. Look, guys, I know. I were showing a lot here. But this one's pretty darn awesome. So they go defensively into, I believe, some cover one on this play. Here's your deep middle safety, okay? Keep an eye on him. But cover one now I think what the Lions were originally looking for here is for DeAndre Swift to run a flat and then kind of wheel it up towards the end zone and that he would be able to throw it to him there because usually in this situation where the Lions just the last two plays they basically threw like flat routes short pickup short pickup flat route flat route Lions here gave you basically the same look once again and I think when you keep showing them that same thing and you come back to it as a defense as soon as he breaks right there and golf's looking there if that guy bites or takes a false step in any way as soon as Swift breaks back up field you might be able to throw it right behind his ear before he can turn around golf doesn't like it now I think a big reason for that is that the guy that matches up with him 53 I believe that's Brian Burns but also this cornerback also takes him so the linebacker actually matches up with Shane it's not the linebacker matching up with Swift or just the edge rusher actually this cornerbacks also matched up with Swift on this play now I think Brian Burns just dropped out to the flat here so this is smart not to throw this ball because the matchup wasn't necessarily there if this is one-on-one -on -one, and you get him to turn, maybe you fire this pass. Doesn't make sense, though, because there's two guys on him basically on this play. Biggest thing is the backside of this. A lot going on, but it's pretty simple. We'll break it down. Look, you have St. Brown is going to be running a jerk route. Sit down and break across. Again, big thing is they're in man coverage. Now, Goff starts to move towards that pass, which I think is by design because, again, he's manned up. They're all manned up here. So as he jerks across the field, he's going to basically run into the line of sight there for Goff, moving that way away from the defense where you could potentially throw this pass. But it's the safety that breaks down to cut it off. Now, they have a breakdown. They have a breakdown, which is important here. They have a breakdown of coverage. They're manned up, one, two, one, two, three. They're all manned up, but they have a breakdown. As Shark kind of works up field uh, here, and then here's the flat route from the inside defender. The outside corner actually jumps on the flat route, as well as the guy that pre-snap is lined up on the inside here with Josh Reynolds. So two guys take him. You're going to see he's going to dive down on it, and the outside corner is going to dive on the flat. And now this guy realizes, oh, shoot, I'm not supposed to do that. I have to sit in here. But, again, St. Brown's not immediately crossing the field. He's running a jerk route, so he sits and then breaks, which can hold that corner because immediately if he crosses the field, it's a no-brainer. Oh, go follow that guy. But he doesn't. You see how he works up field and sits? That cornerback sees him sit, and he's like, oh, okay, I got I can take off there. So it almost gives you the mindset you can take off. Now, all of a sudden, you have your one underneath zone defender. He doesn't know where St. Brown is. He's behind him. So St. Brown works across. Okay, you're saying, all right, well, you can throw that. Safety, however, the free safety breaks down and cuts it off. So now that route is not there. They broke down, but it's not there because safety cut it off. As soon as Goff sees that safety cut it off, it's almost like he just knew, all right, look, there was a linebacker on chain pre-snap, so obviously we like this matchup. But on top of that, there's no one else over there because the safety just broke down. And as soon as that safety comes down on it, Goff immediately finds Shane Zilstra, throws it all the way across the field because you got a linebacker on a tight end, Shane. Right here he is, right? And he just beats him on a dig route. And as soon as that safety bites down, now there's no help. Right there, there's help. Linebacker starts to kind of pause. Safety's in the way. But as Goff move, moves left and looks here to St. Brown, now that safety has to dive down because there was a breakdown in coverage right here. If they were fine, safety may not have to break down. He still may anyway. But as Goff's moving left, safety breaks, cuts it across that half of the field. And now it's a cross the field pass. Talk about going through reads. That's a great example of it. And finding him all the way across the field here, putting it over the linebacker who's behind and giving him a chance. That is one of the coolest touchdowns I've seen this year from the Lions passing the football because it was creative and at the same time was also sweet execution like this was just so well done to me look at that safety bites and as soon as you see that boom I'm firing the thing all the way across the field usually not supposed to do that unless he's wide open and he was not wide open but they made it happen that play was sweet there's another sweet one though again we're getting chunks and this drive mattered so I'm going to show this one I, I won't show the very end because it's like it doesn't really matter we're down 17 but this drive mattered. Cut it down to, I think, two scores, maybe one score, but obviously um, we don't actually end up uh, finishing the drive here, so it was like, oh, that didn't help us. Um, but this drive would have mattered. So this drive was important getting out there. There's a little check at the line. I don't know exactly what it is, obviously. But they go into what looks like cover three on this play, and again, watch how fast Goff seems to recognize it and throw it. But because of the numbers, 
this linebacker is forced to chase this thing up the seam and get basically take himself out of the play and stop and not sit underneath. Why is that? Well, because they bring a blitz. All right, so there's two things going on here. It's not your basic cover three. They're actually going to blitz. They're going to blitz their other underneath zone. Usually this guy's in zone. He drops. He might be in the way here, but he blitzes. So I think there's two things you recognize. Golf sees him, blitz. Okay, boom. Now there's a hole vacated in your cover three. On top of that, on this side, now there's no one in this hole. You have to carry up the seam here. So as soon as that linebacker turns and runs up the seam, now Golf knows there's no one in this hole there is no one over the middle of the field because this flat zone which is the guy that's only left over there under his zone is taking the flat route out of the backfield he's taking a little out route from Brock so as soon as seven carries up that seam I know there's no one in zone underneath here so then golf works up the pocket and puts it on Josh Reynolds for 26 yards. Again, I thought he was doing a really good job of reading stuff fast in this game. I thought he was reading it really fast in this game. And there's really good comfortability there when Evan Brown picks up a blitz like that. Not a lot of crazy stuff going on there. Just a normal blitz, five-band rush. But they pick it up. But again, as soon as he sees that, steps up. Timing is, again, on point. Like, he didn't rush it. He stepped up. Perfect timing and put it on him. That play was sweet, man. Stand It, it was kind of weird. I mean, they're going man coverage on this play, and you can see where the safety is. He's on the left hash. You're snapping in the middle of the hash. So, really, the safety, he's picking the left side of the field. As soon as he does that, then I think all of a sudden you're saying, all right, I'm going to the right side. I mean, it's just it's it's simple as that. They're not, there's not like a half field you're on. You're in the middle of the field. So, for me, I think as a quarterback, as soon as you see his Marit line up on a left hash and they're in man, you go that way. So, that's where golf starts. He just tries to hold that safety as long as possible. But you know you got isolated here. They run similar routes here with St. Brown. Well, actually, St. Brown breaks out, and then Josh Reynolds is going to try to break inside. But it's one-on-one, -on -one, and Josh Reynolds is called for pushing off here on the slot cornerback, and he doesn't actually make this catch. You can see right there at the top of the route. They get him right there with the P.I. And it does feel like these slot receivers kind of have options here. I mean, you look at St. Brown, he ended up breaking outside as his defender kind of sat inside on him. In this case, Josh, as he starts to kind of fade outside, the cornerback seemingly tries to get on top of it, so he then breaks down and tries to break back inside. So it seems like they may have had options based on how the defender was playing. Goff sees this safety on the left side, so he tries to hold him originally, but instead of leading him into a big hit here, he actually throws him back. He throws Josh Reynolds back here away from the safety and gives him a good chance. Probably should have caught that football regardless. He tried to throw him away from the safety as best as he could, but again, they got him with the push off anyway. So if anything, it was just redone the down and we'd have backed up. Uh, but biggest thing is there we didn't we didn't make the play you know what forget that i'm not ending this thing on a bad note because i'm having fun with this i don't want to do that we're gonna end with two good plays and then we'll get out of here okay y'all at this point the game was kind of like it you know it's kind of eh. but i'm still gonna show it anyway because we got two good throws here here they drop into tampa two they did this a few times in this game and uh for us if you watch like the passes that didn't work um a big part of it was usually this outside tampa two why these outside corners were sitting all right so it's usually that kind of thing right okay if it's cover two now that outside corner if he sits on the underneath rock over top if he sits over top i i see underneath well this outside corner kept sitting underneath and taking that away so again I think understanding how the cornerbacks are playing it. But you recognize it's cover, it's Tampa 2 right here. You can see it. So this cornerback, as soon as he turns his head right there, all of a sudden Goff knows got him. It's almost like got him, coach. I got him. Look where the safeties are. Okay, this is not cover six. I got him right here. That cornerback just turned his head. As soon as he does that, because he's turning down to cover underneath here, this out route, which is passed off from the inside zone, he throws it right into that hole of the defense. Safeties are playing extremely deep because of the fact that the game situation they're not in a position where they're really playing tight on this they're giving you like tons of depth so it's a massive window to throw this ball into but as soon as he turns right there you just put it over the guys and obviously the coaches are unhappy but the depth that the safety have is really a big issue there and then shot the shark making something happen afterwards at times they struggle with that just I don't think they necessarily was look to attack it though in this game because I think this game was different. You knew that they weren't going to do that all the time. Um so you're kind of like your your high low routes were more like pushing off this, the, the outside corner rather than trying to find that kind of distance between cornerback and, you know, trying to find that distance between the two defenders. It was more seemingly to attack the type of defense that they play. But either way, this was the touchdown. I show this because it was actually kind of creative. Like, you look at this live and you're like, oh, okay, they just got open. But how do you get open? Well, Brock Wright actually sets a little pick here, okay? Let's talk about pick plays. He sets a pick against man coverage right there. He just kind of sits down in the way. Linebacker's got to work around. Watch him just wrap himself around him and catch a touchdown. I thought that was cool. I mean, yeah, the game was, you know, not in a good spot at this point. I think that put us down two scores. But, uh, you know, potentially if you got the onside kick, you never know. Yeah, I mean, you never know. You get the onside here. But, again, just because of how they're lined up, they're all lined up. They're basically lined up evenly on this play. There's really not a lot of depth um, because they are playing man coverage. And you have three receivers here. There's not a lot of depth here. They're not switching anything. So they're just playing their guys straight up. And all Brock does is set a pick. He releases outside and around and wraps around Brock's guy. And there you go. So that one was – I thought it was cool. I mean, it's, it's, it's basic, but I thought it was a 
kind of cool little design because you watch it live and you're thinking, dang, he just got open. Like, how do you get open like that? He's beat his guy, the guy fall down, what happened? Um, and it was just that. It's kind of a cool play design. So, there you go. That is where we're going to end it. Run game needs to find consistency. I think it happens in a lot of different areas. I think this is a big week. I think it's a good opportunity for the Lions to get the run game back on track just based on uh, who they're going against. They played some good defensive fronts. This week was super aggressive. Um, last week against the Jets was just a really good defensive front, so I understand that. But I think getting Evan Brown back into it consistently um, is very important. I think next week we'll be on track for having a good run day, and that would be huge for us. Uh, we need to get that back. Obviously, the defense side of the ball, they're going to be tested because we know what happened to us last week against Carolina and you know the Bears can do the same exact thing with a more athletic quarterback so it's going to be a battle it's going to be fun I'm here for it let me know the thoughts in the comments below yeah we didn't show everything there were some little things I probably could have shown but again I don't make the video too long thank you Brian, for watching and I'm out